Hello. Welcome to North Penn Legal Services video on SSI and Social Security Disability hearings. If your claim for SSI or disability has been turned down, there is a good chance that your case will be scheduled before an administrative law judge for a hearing. The purpose of this video is to explain the SSI and disability process to you and to offer some suggestions as to how best to prepare for your hearing. During this video, we will cover these topics. What are SSI and Social Security Disability? What is the definition of disability? How is my claim evaluated? What is the appeals process? How can I best help my lawyer or paralegal prepare for the hearing? What happens at the hearing? What are the roles of the administrative law judge, vocational expert, and medical advisor at the hearing? Of course, every case is different and based on the evidence in that particular claimant's file. So what happened to Cousin Bill or Neighbor Smith in their disability hearing may be much different from what happens in your case. The information in this video is general and should not be taken as specific advice in your particular case. However, we do hope that the information provided gives you some understanding of the claims process involved in disability and how to better prepare for your hearing. They are two different programs run by the Social Security Administration. Social Security Disability provides monthly benefits to a disabled worker and dependents based on that worker's earnings. It is an insurance program paid for with each worker's Social Security taxes. It is called an entitlement program because people who have worked and earned enough in five of the last ten years are insured. If they meet the test of disability, they are entitled to a disability check. Supplemental Security Income, or SSI, on the other hand, provides a check to low-income disabled persons who have never worked or have not worked enough to qualify for Social Security Disability. SSI is also available to disabled workers who are entitled to Social Security Disability but whose monthly checks are less than about $600 a month. SSI, then, is not an entitlement program, but a needs-based program. In order to qualify, a person must be disabled and also have little in the way of other income and limited assets and resources. The definition of disability is exactly the same for SSI and Social Security Disability. The inability to engage in any substantial gainful activity as a result of a physical or mental impairment or impairments which have lasted or is expected to last 12 months or result in death. Okay, so what does that really mean? It means that you have to have very serious medical problems as the result of an injury, disease, or condition which makes it very difficult for you to do a full-time job seven hours a day, day after day. Social Security has a set of very complex rules which describe the disability. Your attorney or paralegal will discuss with you these rules as they apply to your case. Social Security has an agreement with all the states to let state employees review disability claims. In Pennsylvania, the claims are reviewed by the Bureau of Disability Determination of the Department of Labor and Industry. BBD employees gather medical evidence you listed in your application. If they believe it is necessary, they will schedule medical appointments for you to be examined by a doctor or psychologist who then sends in reports. BBD employees then make a decision to award 
or deny benefits to you. A notice is mailed to you explaining the decision. If your claim is denied, you have 60 days to appeal. If your claim is denied, you have 60 days to file a request for a hearing. Your local Social Security office has the forms you need and can help you to file the appeal. It is very important to file within 60 days. If your appeal is late, it will be dismissed. Because there are so many appeals filed around the country, offices of hearings and appeals are swamped with cases. For this reason, your case may not be scheduled for a hearing for a year or more. A lot of people seem to think that once they have had an appointment with their lawyer or paralegal, they have handed the matter over to that person. Nothing could be less true. In the time between your first interview and your hearing, this is what you must do. Keep your attorney informed about changes in your address and phone number. Tell your attorney about any new doctor or hospital visits. Keep a journal or take pictures or videos if requested to do so. Follow through on your attorney's recommendations to get into counseling or to see a psychologist or other mental health professional. Gather records your attorney requested you to get. Remember, this is not your attorney's case, it's your case. Your chances of winning will be improved if you do all that your attorney asks you to do. You and your attorney or paralegal will be notified when your case is ready to be scheduled for a hearing. This is the time to make sure all the medical evidence, school records, or other evidence has been gathered and submitted to the administrative law judges or ALJ's office. The hearing is held in front of an ALJ. In addition to the ALJ, you and your attorney or paralegal, several other persons could be present during your hearing. Let's look at the roles of each participant. My name is John Fraze. I'm an administrative law judge for the Social Security Administration. Uh, hearings are recorded, therefore answers from uh, the witnesses need to be verbal rather than uh, nodding your head or pointing. Uh, most people do that anyway, so we try to remind each other uh, when we do that because if anybody should listen to the recording and it, uh, it doesn't say anything, if somebody's pointing to their left shoulder, we may say, uh, the claimant is pointing to their left shoulder and you shouldn't be embarrassed about that because uh, that's uh, simply the way people are. We all do it. Uh, the process would be that we would uh, admit your exhibits into the uh, record for evidence. Uh, we would um, also uh, swear everybody in, including the medical expert, uh, the vocational expert, if those folks are present as well as the uh, claimant and any witnesses that the claimant may have present. Uh, we do not swear in the representative as they are not normally witnesses. Uh, the judge then will probably ask the uh, claimant a series of questions. Uh, some of the judges have a preset series of questions they ask, some do not. All of them conduct their hearings slightly different from the other judges. Uh, but there's also a pattern to it usually. The, um, the judges typically ask a lot of questions of the claimant and then uh, the representative or the lawyer asks whatever questions he may want to follow up. Uh, questions are then asked of the medical expert and the vocational expert uh, to determine what limitations the uh, claimant may have 
either physical or psychological. Once that's determined, uh, the judge then will ask the vocational expert to take in consideration the claimant's age, education, work history, and whatever limitations have been established, and the vocational expert then should be able to tell us whether or not there are any jobs that the claimant is capable of doing. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Anthony Galdieri, and I'm one of a number of uh, medical experts on a panel that Social Security uses for disability hearings. Social Security normally will notify my office and ask if I would be available for your particular hearing. They do not necessarily give me your name. I agree on a date and they will send me a file. The medical experts are put on the panel based on their qualifications. There's generally two sets of medical experts. There's the mental health, which I am, and there's the medical doctors, such as the orthopedics and the internists. What I do is when I receive your file, I review your file, and I have such a file like that in front of me. And what I do is I review the file, I prepare notes, then I, I appear at the date of the hearing. And at the hearing, I come in as an impartial witness, which means that Social Security is not paying me to testify against or for you. I come in as an impartial witness, I review the file, and the judge will usually ask me questions about the file so he or she could understand it better. Many times, I will also ask you about your file because sometimes there's information that I need in terms of having it updated or there's sometimes conflicting information and I would like to have that clarified before I turn to the judge to give my opinion on your case. Hi, my name is Kristen Saliaco and I'm a vocational expert. I'm one of several vocational experts that are chosen by the Social Security Office to listen to hearings and to provide vocational expert witness testimony during your hearing. Uh, there are different ways that vocational experts are chosen by Social Security. Generally, there is an educational requirement. In my case, I have a master's degree in rehabilitation counseling, and they are also looking for individuals who have vocational or work experience working with people who have disabilities in attempting to locate employment opportunities for them. I've spent approximately 16 years working with individuals who have disabilities and locating jobs for them in the local economy. My job is to review your file and to determine your age, your education, and your past relevant vocational history. I look at your jobs throughout the last 15 years, and based on that information, I determine the skill level of each of your jobs, as well as the physical requirements of your job. And I am then able to determine if you have any skills that transfer to other jobs in the local, regional, or national economies. During the hearing, the judge will conduct the hearing and take your testimony. And if a medical expert is available, the medical expert will provide his or her testimony. And I am then asked several hypothetical questions. Those questions are, again, hypothetical in nature, and they don't pertain specifically to you, the claimant. The judge will ask different hypothetical questions and attempt to determine if there are any jobs available that are suitable for an individual with varying degrees of disability or restrictions. I will then determine if there are jobs available and I'll give the judge a list of those jobs as well as the number of jobs that are available in the local economy as well as throughout the state and nationally. At the end of the hearing, after the hypotheticals are presented, typically the judge will ask me whether given the testimony presented by the claimant here today, if that person would be able to do any type 
of work on a consistent 40-hour a week basis. And then I consider your testimony and determine if you would be able to sustain employment on a regular 40-hour a week basis. And essentially that's the role uh, that I have. I'm responding to hypotheticals only, except for the last question that's pertaining to your actual testimony. After the hearing, the ALJ can direct your representative to obtain more information or can schedule another medical exam for you. Once all the information has been submitted, the ALJ must prepare a written decision either granting or denying your claim for benefits. Once you receive your decision in the mail, you should call your representative to discuss it. If you win, you will need to contact your local Social Security office. If you lose, you need to discuss whether or not a further appeal is warranted. We sincerely hope the information provided in this video will help you to understand the SSI and disability claims process so that you can be prepared to help your attorney or representative present the best possible case to the ALJ. Of course, the information in this video is meant to be general. Every person's case is different.